Hello, Active Sage here on the Sage channel, and a wonderful update came out today that added two things, really. One, the ability to control things, like that little scout from afar, which means I could sit in this seat right here, press K, I got a bunch of ship pulldowns at the top here. Scout show is that one we were just looking at. I can find the remote control block in here and click control. I'm actually controlling it now, but what else I need to do? I need to, of course, use the camera on it. So I pressed K, but because I was in control of the object, it instantly brings up the scout underscore show menu because I'm in control of it now. I don't have to actually go ahead and navigate to the ship pull down. I'm just instantly in it. So I was able to find the camera right away. So that's one thing they added today, which is pretty dang awesome. They'll control stuff while you're still sitting there. Another thing they've added, and by the way, I will be coming back to that. But another thing they added are these timer things here. Let me go ahead and press tab that way, not claustrophobic me bombarded with all that stuff there. But these are the timer blocks they've just added. And the timer blocks, so I'll just go ahead and press K on one of these. And you can see it's set up here with these four little buttons. It is very similar to how a sensor works. The fact that it has, you know, set up actions, which would be what it does when it's triggered, and then trigger, which of course for a sensor would be, you know, it's a large area and what it detects. For this, we just have trigger and then it will start the countdown here until it actually sends a signal to whatever you have set up actions. So if we were to trigger it now, pretty much instantly, with the one second set up there, it will go ahead and just bah, set off whatever it's set to. So right now, with this one, we actually have it set off, set to turn on a set of lights and turn off a set of lights, as well as trigger another timer. And what this is basically doing is, as soon as this one goes, it sets her off this other timer here, but it also, of course, turned on lights, which was turning on this set of lights right here, this line right here. If you saw my previous update video, I made something similar to this. And then, of course, the once the next timer goes, it shuts off that set of lights. That next timer is told to shut those off and turn on its own set. But then, of course, it's set to turn on the next timer in the chain. So each one of these is turning on its set of lights, turning off the previous set of lights, and then turning off the next timer. And it goes all the way down. Once it gets to the end, it's supposed to loop back and set off the first one again. And I have all that set up right here. Basically, all I do have is that first timer set up to be triggered when I press this button. And there we go, it goes down, and of course it gets to the end, and it loops back to the beginning, which is pretty dang awesome. And of course, this isn't like the delays in blinking that I had before. You can have a huge, huge line of these like this, which is pretty dang awesome. And of course, these machines don't actually have to be anywhere near these lights. I just had them there, that way it was easier to set up. Now, of course, what I can do is in here is go ahead and select, if I wanted to, all of the timer blocks. And of course, if we said, hey, this is a bit too quick, let's go ahead and delay it a bit so we could have it like that. And actually, we're going to probably have to reset it now. So we'll do that and start it over again. There we go. So there we go. It's a four second delay between each switch, which is a bit long, you know, but you get the point. It's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. By the way, all these LG underscore groups, that's just all the different sets of lights. So let's go ahead and bring it down to... Uh, 1.5, so it should be fairly quick again. One and a half. Huh, this doesn't seem to be quite what I expected. I suspect the 0.5. Okay, there we go. That's more like I expected. So there you go. Nice progression. What I have at the end here, though, you probably saw me hit this button once, is actually another one of these timer groups. Because unlike normal buttons like that, you know, or maybe you have it set up to a group or something like this, I can actually have it set up to trigger a timer. And in timers, you can have them do a whole assortment of different actions. So on this one that shuts everything off, I'm telling absolutely all the lights in that hallway to shut off, but I'm also telling all these timers to stop. Otherwise, if I just told the lights to shut off, these guys would just keep on going. And I can actually demonstrate that in the silly mistake that is, because of course, they're all doing their same light on and off thing, so all I'll be doing is cutting the loop early, and it'll just carry back on from wherever it was. So I do all lights. We can go ahead and actually go into here, do the setup action. We'll remove this part here, so we'll remove from toolbar. So now all it's going to do is deal with the lights if I shut, tell it to fire that timer. And so now I push that, and instantly the lights go off, but the timer's still ticking in the background. So yeah, I had to make sure I had it also to deactivate all those timers just to tell them to stop which is pretty dang awesome. And of course, you can set those up to pistons, rotors, all sorts of stuff. And you probably noticed in there when I was actually in the setup of that, if I go back into the setup actions, look at the bottom. You can do shift number keys and you can set up a billion different actions. And of course, just like everything else, you can also drag groups down here, which is why I had this set the stop before. It is a whole lot of stuff. Of course, I almost would rather at this point prefer 
just a normal list of the different items. You can end up with so much stuff. I'd pretty much rather just have this list right here and be able to click and drag it into that area or even just type in names or something of that sort. Anyway, that's timers. They're pretty amazing. And this is just another setup I had over here to demonstrate the super, super simple looping of the two. So I can say start and this one basically sets off that one and toggles this light. So it's basically another way to make a blinking light if you don't want to, for some odd reason, use the basic blinking light setup. And this one doesn't seem to be working right now. I suspect on save and reload, sometimes these things have some issues. Let me see, setup. Yes, apparently it's undone what I had it set out as earlier. It has been quite a while. So this is, I believe, itself. So we go ahead and tell this to start the other one. That's the one on the right. And then we'll also tell it to toggle this light on and off. And then we're going to go ahead and select the other block, which I think is actually... Well, all we got to do for this one is just set it to activate the other one. So I just took toggle... Oh, this one should already be good, shouldn't it? So we'll start. And there we go. Yeah, you can see it's going between the two nice and quick. As one goes off, it sets the other one off, which is basically the other one. All it does is set off the first one again, which, of course, every time it gets triggered, it's telling that light to toggle. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Whew! Nasty blink. We don't even need these anymore. They're a strange block, actually, if you look at them. You know, you can see probably on they were blinking there as they sort of count, but all, even the look of them is very strange. If you look at the top, it's almost like something out of a mathematician machine or something. And actually, does that even turn? Let me see really quickly if we go ahead and set this to a timer of... I don't know. Let's go ahead and set it to... And by the way, you can control and left-click to set a time in there and tell it to start. Do the gears actually turn? Nope. But of course the lights do actually blink, which is pretty cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Oh, and by the way, you can actually use those timers on small ships as well. But let's go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is the new control block. So that, what we were just using right now, if you scroll down, you can find it right, where'd it go? I guess I was wrong. It's up here, right there. It's a timer block right there between your landing gear and your storage and all that. Boy, this is getting cluttered. But if you scroll down, you'll find down here where they're sort of adding their new high-tech stuff, you'll find the remote control block. And this remote control block works on large ships, small ships, stations, all that. And if you place it in, you can see it's a pretty interesting thing. And it actually matters which way you place it too, because this is the front right here with this thing. And imagine it's sort of like a really strange arrow pointing up saying, hey, that's the top of it. And at the side, you got this thing. Imagine that almost as an arrow saying, hey, that's the front of it. And of course, this is the front here, but if you're placing in a tight space, that's actually very helpful to have that on the side. Alright, sorry about the little cut there. What we're going to do now is go ahead and build a small ship, basically demonstrate what you need for a little drone of sorts that you're going to control yourself. So first off, we're going to get this little platform up here. I'm going to get a very basic start to a ship, and now we're basically going to build it like any other ship. Your first thing you're going to need is power, then you're going to need yourselves a few simple systems like gyroscopes, and of course, you're going to need a thruster in every which direction. So we get our few thrusters in there, and one that way, and one that way. And now for a normal ship, all you need to do is stick a cockpit on it and it would be done. Now, for this ship, what you're going to need is this computer core thing I've already shown you here. And again, remember the front I was talking about? This works, ooh, well that's no good. But this works the same as a cockpit. You're going to need to make sure that the front of it is the way you're going to want to use the ship as the front. So we've probably set in. We're going to also need an antenna. And then it's always advisable that if you're using a ship from afar, you're probably going to want to also place in a camera. And remember the camera, the word camera is right side up if it's right side up the way you want it. But of course, you don't even need that because what you can do is if you'd like, you could go ahead and just control this thing even without the antenna. So if we were just to go ahead and select it right now and you could go remote control, control, I'm actually in control of this little ship right now. And you can see the color on the control block, the remote control block, it's actually turned to blue to indicate it is being controlled. Now, I have a sneaky suspicion they're going to change this in the near future, because that is a bit odd to be able to control this ship without any sort of antenna on it. So I suspect that'll be changing. But what you can do is also, to future proof, go ahead and make sure you stick your antenna on here. And then of course what you're gonna wanna do is name this ship. So we're gonna go ahead and place that control panel back in select our wonderful little control panel that's stuck upside down on silly spot select everything is they they want you to claim it all as yourself and then maybe share it with faction so i did control a and then up to the right there i told it to be owned by me and now you can go to the information tab and i can't actually do it you have to exit this and then go back in and then go to the information tab and now you can name it so we can name it display ship there we go so now this is going to be our little display ship and now what we can do is access that from 
pretty much anywhere within range of that antenna. So we can sit down in our chair, press K at the top left, go ahead and find display ship, and go ahead and find the remote control block. Click control, there we go, you can see it over there at the left, it's moving, voila, we can press K as I mentioned way earlier. This will now give us direct control over this. So we can go ahead and select the camera and select a view, and there we go. Now we are in control of this little tiny drone, which is pretty dang awesome. I should note that in creative mode, if you press F7, which brings the camera into spectator, but following your character, you'll now be controlling the little drone. And also F8, it just gives you free as usual, but if you do F6, nothing happens. If you do F9, you're back in control of the drone, but the camera is static, just like usual, but F6 doesn't bring you back to your body. Of course, if you go ahead and press K, you're still in control of the drone, so you can go back to the camera and get control of view that way. And of course, at any point, you can press T and get back out of the drone's control. Now, another thing I was fiddling with, you've probably seen them all over, are these turrets here. A terrible, terrible thing. They're currently not working as expected. So if I go ahead and pull this pull down here, you can see a bunch of scouts. Ignore those, but you can see turret down there. So I can click that, but you'll notice that these three things here don't change. Even if I click drifting turret, nothing seems to change. For some odd reason, this is another turret by the way that I was trying to see if it was a name issue. For some odd reason, I can't seem to access the control computer or the remote control computer in this thing or really any of it. Because here's this large antenna here, this station is actually named turret, but nothing's happening. It's very, very strange. These are all named turret or ADSF or whatever. Even these ones way over here. But they do actually work. So, and by the way, the drifting turret one, that's the, oh god, that's busy. That's this one here that I figured maybe if it didn't ha wasn't connected to a station, it would work. Still no dice. And these are indeed connected through the large rotor to small rotor thing that you've probably seen before. Anyway, let's go ahead. You can actually control these, though, if you go up to them manually here. Not sure if this will be in there forever. I'm just assuming eventually you'll actually need to have a antenna that works, but for now, this is the best way to get it works. So now I'm in control. I have button two to go to camera that's right in the middle, and I have some weapons here that I can fire, and then button three is actually over here. Now, strangely enough, this one doesn't seem to want to turn. There's a gyroscope in there, but for some reason, it's being finicky right now. I can aim it up and down, but for some reason, left and right doesn't really want to listen. I can exit that and go ahead and try to add a few more gyroscopes to it to get it to work. Let's try that again now, shall we? Okay. Turret, control, nope, doesn't, oop, oop, well, there we go, I've bumped it against the ground too hard, but for some odd reason, it just does not want to turn, maybe it's a locked rotor, let me check, there we go, it was indeed a locked rotor right at the bottom, so now we have direct control of it, and we can spin it around freely, and of course, aim up, down, I do have locks on it, but the explosion was because I, those gyroscopes also showed up at the bottom, but there you go, now I have full free reign of that, I've taken out some of my own turrets. And of course I can switch to another camera if I want to on it, which is pretty cool. It's just strange though that uh, it doesn't currently seem to want to work through the antennas like I would expect. I think it has something to do with the fact that the whole thing, the station and the small ship that I've built into it, are both being counted as the same ship, of course, but it's... Yeah, having like some sort of conflict of interest, I can't quite tell. And it doesn't explain why it doesn't work when I have just the drifting turret there. Maybe it's something to do with the fact that it's two ships merged together, I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, here's another one that this one should actually be set up a bit better, so we can go ahead and once again select a remote. Oops, there we go. It's like remote, click control, we're in control, we can do our view, fire there, and our secondary view there. And you might have noticed something there. Notice, those screen blurriness is gone. I'm actually glad that's gone. Uh, it's when you switch between cameras for the first time that disappears, because of course if we were first select this, we go uh, K, remote control again, and then control, and then press the camera button, you get the the lines on screen. I'm not sure what else to call it. The annoying lines, which is kind of cool, but it makes it very hard to see in the end. I'm not very happy with it. But of course, if you switch between two different cameras, it goes away, which is pretty cool. And I actually hope they leave that in or they at least tone down the lines eventually. Anyway, that's that. That's pretty cool. The only other two things I have to show is a funny little brain stealing drone here, if I can get up to it correctly. So we fly towards this and keep. Oh, oh, there we go. Without pressing any button, now I'm in control of it. And let me exit this quickly by pressing T 
and turn on my inertial dampeners because if your momentum is still going you'll keep flying and what that drone is basically and I'm going to use a spectator to get close to it so I can show you is on the front of the drone I have a sensor set up there to detect players and all that that sensor is set up to is this timer on the right which triggers a view camera and also trigger, tig, tri triggers what the hell triggers this control block right in the middle that gives you control over it. And this isn't even owned by anybody. I'm not sure if it's going to stay like that in the future. I'm suspecting that in the future I'll actually have to own it to gain control. But right now, you can theoretically you send some of these at your enemies or be flying a big ship with a bunch of sensors at the bottom and just screw people up by randomly putting them in control of like a camera out in the middle of nowhere or even a small drone like this, which of course my body keeps moving on with the same speed I was giving it before, which is sort of troublesome. So let me get back to my body. There we go. Of course, you could drift into it without having any issue. So let me drift towards it right there. And I'm not pressing any buttons. And it should have given me control. Looks like maybe I hit a wrong button. Like Y and powered it down, though. Anyway, that's that. That's pretty cool. The only th other thing is probably all this uranium that you see sitting there. And that's because now with the ore detectors, you can go ahead and have them set to relay that information through an antenna. And that's what all these little scouts are doing here. They're basically looking at this. They got ore detectors on their front. And if we were to go ahead and look at the ore detectors, you can see there's this new toggle here that broadcasts using antenna, which basically broadcasts any ores they see. So you could basically have a large ship with a singular or ore detector, or maybe just a few small ships like this set up about an asteroid. That way you don't actually actually go scanning yourself, or you could have a mining ship that is just dedicated to mining, or probably a mining drone now. Anyway, that's it, guys. Sorry if this is a bit rambly. It's an interesting, a lot of interesting concepts with this. I'm actually quite happy with it all, even if I've run into a few glitches with it, especially those turrets. I spent a lot of time working on those turrets, as you can probably tell, and they didn't pay off. Also, there needs to be a quick option to just toggle off seeing all these dang things on your UI. I, I don't think there is actually any option right now, but there really needs to be some sort of option to actually just hide beacons unless you want it, and preferably with a button toggle, because that is just a bit too cluttered for me, but at times, you of course want that. Anyway, that's it guys. Thanks a bunch for watching. There's a few other little things that I didn't really go into, like being able to show gravity ranges and scanner ranges from the actual console. Just go ahead and look at them usually. You could probably actually do that right now if I was to go ahead and just demonstrate that right now because I feel bad not showing you guys. Uh, you don't even have to be in creative for this. This is a new thing where as long as it's neutral or friendly, you can go up into here and all the way down at the bottom, I believe it is... Oh, it looks like I have to actually go to info. That's it. Go to info. Sorry. Yeah, go to info. As long as the structure is friendly or neutral, you can do uh, show gravity range and show sensor fields ranges. Oh, and nearly forgot. I actually do actually have to go into the sensor itself and where it says show on HUD. You have to turn that on as well. And now you can see this sort of red bubble here. So again, long as the sensor is friendly or neutral, and long as you go into the information tab of the actual thing, I don't think it's actually anywhere. Yeah, it has to be on the actual ship. So long as you go into the information tab. Oh no, these are anywhere. So anywhere you want, you can turn these on. But long as the actual sensor itself is set to show on HUD right here, you'll actually be able to see that thing. So again, long as you have it set in the actual sensor and then in the info tab on yourself have this set up here you'll be able to actually see that bubble and that works also for gravity generators uh the round ones i believe and the definitely the square ones and sensors on big and small ships anyway guys that's it thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this randomness and i will see you next time